Thanks for coming back to Intermediate Algebra. We've got a boatload to do today. Many of you that have been here before know I talk real fast. I'm your host, Bill Whitty. And if I talk too fast, the deal is you can always go to the webpage at www.montgomerycollege.edu upslash algebra2. Well, what do we got today? Well, stranger from the outside. Some really tough stuff. You thought last week was tough. Today we're going to be working with radicals. We're going to be doing all kinds of things with square roots, cube roots. We'll be rationalizing the denominators, working with these things called conjugates, and even doing uh, equations that involve radicals. Okay? We have a little bit of time. What did we do last week? You watched it. You can't unwatch it. Yep, I hope you remember it. Let's see. These were uh, tricks involving your old buddy, LCD Man. And we couldn't even think of using LCD Man unless we involved his buddy, too. Okay, remember what we did with these two guys? Well, one of the things we did was complex fractions. What did we do with them? Well, we simplified them. Holy alphabet. Something like this, okay? Well, in a fraction like this, there's something I have to ask you. We had to find the LCD first. Well, let's see. I looked at all the bottoms, and I saw one had a bottom of X, one had a bottom of Y. That wasn't too hard here. Hmm. The LCD was Certainly. just XY. Okay, now what did I do with XY to simplify this fraction in a fraction thing, this complex fraction? Well, I noticed that it had a top and a bottom, and whenever I have something with a top and bottom, and the top and bottom's the same, I've got my buddy one. What's going to be in the top and bottom this time? Guess what? LCD. That's what's going to be in the top and bottom, thereby making your buddy one, and thereby making this legal. In this case, LCD. You multiply the whole top. Play it for her, play it for me. And the whole bottom. Play it for me. And let's see what happens. Well, that's going to become, and it's not a fraction, of course. We're going to get some cancellation here, and come on down. We don't have a fraction anymore. Cancel here, and there again. Come on down. No fraction, and you got yourself no problem. A simplified fraction. Now one has to ask. The important thing is, is it your final answer? I hope you remember. We never cancel things that are added. So that was it. Just when I think you've said the stupidest thing ever, you keep talking. Well, that was top and bottom. What about equations? They don't have a top and bottom. They have a left and right. We still used our buddy LCD man. Pay attention, boys. I'll show you how it's done. Let's take a look. Here's one. LCD man. Multiplied everybody by LCD man. What was it in this case with 5y, 7, and y? The least common denominator, I guess, would be 35y. Now, let's see if this does, in fact, fix us up. That cancels 35y and 5y, and I get 7. Of course, you've got to multiply by your 6, and you get 42. No fraction. Next term, multiply here the 7 and the 35. I get a 5y. Got to multiply by your 2. At least I don't have a fraction. And lastly, cancel the y's here, I get 105. Now, you should know how to solve this. Let's get y alone. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. I'll subtract 42. And then, let's see, got to get that 10 out of there. He's multiplying, so I divide both sides. And this is big leagues, baby. We can have decimals. And the answer was, in fact, 6.3. I'm dangerous. I'm very, very dangerous. OK, that was the trick with fr uh, fractional equations. Multiply everybody left and right by the LCD. Then we also did some word problems involving these fractions. Rate, time, and distance. They reeked of fractions, OK? You still follow the same steps of all uh, word problems. What were they? Let's play. Here we go. 
Let's try it. Excuse me? We always, in these rate, time, and distance problems, used one of these charts. Remember that? With six blank boxes where we tried to fill in four of the six. We still began with our first step, name what X is, and it was always what they wanted to know. Here, they wanted to know, well, let's see, a passenger train travels at 80 miles an hour, a freight train travels at 30 miles an hour. If they travel in opposite directions, how long will it take before they're 275 miles apart? So they're asking how long. So I'm thinking X in this case is time. Okay, so there's my first step. You can't do anything, and that's, people that screw up word problems forget to do that first step. I know you are, but what am I? Well, they both travel the same amount of time, so we put an X in both cases. And we cross out as we go along. Step two, define everything else in the problem in terms of X. Now, one guy's rate is 80, and the other guy's rate, cross that out, is 30. Okay, and I have four of the six filled in, and I cross out as I go. Now, I fill in the two blank boxes using our formulas, which you should know. Distance is rate times time. Same there. Now what do I do with these two hard boxes? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Well, that's why I crossed out. Whatever's left from my crossouts usually tells me my equation. In this case, they traveled in opposite directions and they were 275 miles apart. So their distances add up to what? To 275. Ooh, yes. And there's my equations, bub. Step four, solve the equation. Let's put together like terms and divide both sides, and I get x is 2.5. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Going so soon? I wouldn't hear of it. Why, my little party, just begin. We have to answer the question. 2.5, 2.5 what? Well, the question asks for time, and we put in a, uh, a unit of miles per hour, so 2.5 must be 2.5 hours. You are so smart. And there it is, bub. Oh, I also covered one more type of word problems. Work problems. They were similar. They had fractions. Throw me a frickin' bone here. I'm the boss. Need the info. Let's see. It took an experienced painter six days to paint a home. It took an apprentice eight days to paint the same house. How long will it take if they work together? Well, we still use our chart here, okay? Six boxes, try and fill in four of the six. We still begin by asking what X is. Well, what do they want to know? How long will it take if they work together? Aha! So X is time. And then once again, in this case, I'm going to cross it out and try and fill in all, or at least four of the six, everything else. Well, let's see. I know you are, but what am I? They both work the same amount of time in this case, OK? And what else can I fill in? Crossing that out. Well, this is the new thing for work. If you knew how long it took somebody to do something, their rate was one over that number. Certainly. So for instance, the experienced painter took six days to do it. His rate is one over six. The apprentice took eight days to do it. So his rate is one over eight. We cross that out. Now, what about work problems? Well, we still fill in the two blank boxes using our formulas. Work, in this case, is rate times time. And we use those two, what I call the hard boxes, to make up the equation. And we still use what's left. Holy mackerel, there's not much left. They work together to paint one house. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, the amount of work that each did the amount of work the experienced painter did, plus the amount of work the apprentice did, equals... Well, Dexter, what do we do now? Remember what we did? Equals one house. Oh. Often, they add it up to one. If we have fractional equations, or one equation, what's going to be the trick to solve this bad boy? Up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! We're going to use... LCD, man. The LCD of 6 and 8 is 24. 
If we multiply through, everything should cancel out. Sweet. Let's see. 24 and 6. 24 and 8. Ooh, you love this. Nothing, nothing cancels on the right. We got ourselves an equation with no fractions. Now let's solve it. Combine like terms and divide by both sides by 7. And x in this case is 24 sevenths. Let me get a decimal approximation of that. 24 sevenths, about 3.4. Now why days? Because the unit you put in is the unit you get out. So the answer is 3.4 brilliance. Days. That's all I can say. Sheer, unadulterated brilliance. Okay, there's your review, bub. What do we got remember, for today? Remember, well, before we do this new stuff today, I think I want to make sure that you know some of the old stuff that it relies on, okay? From last class or from maybe 100 years ago in Algebra 1. Do you mind telling me what this is all about, mister? Remember this thing? The square root of 16. That's what that is. What is the square root of 16? Is it 4? Well, you can check. 4 squared. Making copies! Or 4 two times. That's where the term square came from. Does equal 16. So guess what? Certainly. The square root of 16 is, in fact, 4. Now... Now you say the square root of 16 is 4. Do you remember? Could it be? It, maybe it could be negative 4 also. Hmm. Well, let's check it. Negative 4 squared. Uh -huh. Remember where the square came from. What's negative 4 squared? So let it be written. Negative 4 times negative 4, two negatives, does equal 16. So, so let it be done. The square root of, neg of 16 does equal negative 4. Hmm. There's something screwy around here. Well, the square root of a number has two answers. The positive one and the negative one. That's going to come into play today. And if you're lazy, you may want to write plus and minus four. Be looking for that symbol, plus and minus. It could happen, couldn't it? Uh-oh. Now, what about this one? That has a little teeny three up there. What does that mean? No longer the square root of 64, like eight. This is the cube, or third root of 64. Now what am I gonna do? Well. No way. It's not eight, because eight cubed, eight times eight times eight doesn't equal 64. Could it be? Well, let's check, see if it's four. Four to the third power. Whoa. That's where the cube came from. Making copies. Four times four times four, or four times four, 16 times four, does equal 64. Hey, you're plumb right, Harmon. So the cube root of 64 is four. Is it negative four? No, not in this case. If you just check it every time, negative four times negative four times negative four doesn't equal 64, equals negative 64. So it doesn't work there, okay? What about this one, the fourth root of 81? Hmm, same theory, it's called the fourth root. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. What number to the fourth power would be 81? Perhaps I could be of some assistance. Well, let's try maybe three. That's a reasonable guess. Nine's a reasonable guess, but three is three to the fourth power. Oh, yes. Let's check it. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 does equal 81. So guess what? 3 is the fourth root, or a fourth root, of 81. Genius! That's what it is! Sheer genius! And in fact, this is an even root, and hopefully you'll see a pattern. Negative 3 is also a fourth root, because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, 4 times, does equal positive 81. So in even roots, such as square roots and fourth roots, we do have two answers. Odd roots, like cubes, or fifth roots, or whatever, only have one answer. Okay, so remember what that plus and minus sign means. Two answers. Houston, we have a problem. Now what about the square root of 14? Do you have any number squared that equals 14? Oh, yes. Nope, some of them, most of them, don't come out exact. 
so we can estimate them. We might have to do that. I know the square root of 9, so it must be bigger than that, because 14 is bigger than 9. I know that, dude. That's 3. And I know the square root of 16. I know that, dude. It's 4, so it's somewhere between 3 and 4. I know you are, but what am I? Well, the square root of 14, I hope you believe, is about equal to... Oh. And I just took a guess there. I know it's more than 3 and a half because so you see how 14 is closer to 16 than it is to 9. So my guess was something bigger than that. But this is only an estimate. So let it be written. Because if we square 3.74, multiply it by itself, what do we get? So let it be done. 13.99. Ooh. You're way off. I say you're way off. Well, this we're not time, way huh? off, but we're not exact. It's just pretty close. So you're not going to get an exact answer when you don't have an exact square root. So sometimes you have to estimate. Missed it by that much. Okay. Be ready to estimate. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. Now, when we deal with these square roots, it's going to be useful to know the exact ones. Okay. Some people like to memorize, some don't. Well, let's look at the exact ones. For instance, the square and its root, we know the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16, going right in order, is 4. What's the next one? 25. The square root is 5. What's the next one? 36. Now you could derive these. I bet you're doing that in your head now. 49. They go up forever. 64. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. These are the perfect square roots. And they're good to know, but you could just figure them out if you would. Holy alphabet. Now, what about letters, variables? What's the square root? What number squared is x squared? Well, that's going to be of use to you. That's x. You figure that one out. What number squared is x to the fourth? Well, I bet you figured that one out too, x squared. However, uh -oh. what number squared is x to the sixth? Don't tell me you can't do it. If you remember that you add exponents, uh -huh. the answer is x to the third. x to the third times x to the third does equal x to the sixth. So son of a gun, it is the square root of it. Basically, all we're going to do is divide by 2. The square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th, son of a gun. Yoink. That's not a bad. The square root of x to the 10th is... <laughs> you predicted that, x to the 5th. The square root of x to the 12th is x to the 6th. Any even uh, exponent, if you would, is going to have its variables, is going to have a perfect square root. One more, x to the 14th. It, not 14, but x to the 14. Certainly. The square root is x to the 7th. This is going to be of great use when hey man, check it out, huh? we have such uh, variable terms. Now, another thing you're supposed to do last semester is simplify or take out as much exactness in a radical as you could. And you may remember my way of doing it was to break it up into two radicals. Hmm. I broke it up into the perfect square roots and the leftover garbage. Well, let's see. What's the biggest perfect square root that goes into 18? That was why it was good to know them, 9. And if I take 9 out of 18, I get the leftover 2. Okay? Now, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 2 can't do anything with. It's 3 square root of 2. You look marvelous. And that's how you simplify it. Break it into good and evil, you might say. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Now, we can do the same thing if we have a number in front. We're gonna, 2 is fine. It's the, it's the 125 that's a troublemaker. Hmm. So let's break 125 into its perfect square root and the garbage left over. Now, 2, let's see, 125, the perfect square root is the biggest one, is 25. And that leaves me with, forget the 2 for a second, 125 divided by 25. Oh, 
very bad, definitely unacceptable. Can't do anything yeah. with five, okay? Now, uh -oh. don't forget the two. Bring them on down. I meant to do that. Okay. Now, the square root of 25, the reason he's there is because he's perfect, so I know what he is. He's five. And now, uh -oh. don't forget, two will talk to him. Two loves him now. Come on down. And two times five is 10. Can't do anything with that radical five. Spoken. Okay, and that's your answer. I don't understand. Now, there's a, if you don't like memorizing the perfect square roots, there's another approach to this that some people teach, and it's worthy of looking at. Let's break the square root of 18 <laughs> into its prime factorization. Break them up as far as he'll go. And then just bring down the scum that's left over after you take out pairs. Hmm. I see that 3 is a pair, so that's going to come out. Elvis has left the building. He comes out, and I don't have any more pairs, hmm. so he just goes inside. Oh, yes. Oh, what a jip. That's another way to do this, if you like. Just take out pairs out of the little building. Aha! That's another way. What have I done to deserve this? Now, let's do this one both ways. We could break it into good and evil. No, it's not that bad. Quit crying. The good ones and the evil. We just need to do a little bit at a time. For instance, the 50, I'll break into the good one, 25, and the leftover from 25. Whoa. Shine, shine, shine. The two. X to the third, I'm going to break into his perfect square root, which is the biggest one, x squared, leaving me with some scum of x. That's all I can do with x. Now, sometimes they're all good. A to the sixth is a perfect square root. So he goes in the good pile. He's all good. And b, sometimes they're all bad, like your little sister. Whoa! So, Someone smells stinky. He's all bad. Just throw him in a bad pile. That's all you can do. Uh, the mother load. You can do the good guys. Let's see. The square root of 25, x squared, a to the sixth is all set up. There it is. 5x, a to the third. And the scum can't do anything with. Excellent. And that's how you do it. Now. Direction unclear. Please repeat request. Let's do the same thing using our other method. If you like to, we, it's a little tough to break it all up, but if you break it all up, just be another method if you like this. And all we got to do is take out the pairs and then put what's left inside the house. Hmm. There's a pair. Elvis has left the building. Any more pairs? Hmm. There's another one. He's coming out. Elvis has left the building. Any more pairs? Hmm. Let's do it in pairs now, not threes. Elvis has left the building. There we go. And I don't see any other pairs, per se. Hmm. Three oh, yes. goes inside. Oh, what a jip. Hmm. X goes inside. Oh, yes. Oh, what a jip. Hmm. And B goes inside. Oh, yes. Oh, what a jip. And multiply what you, what you can. Is that your final answer? No. Oh, 5 times 2x. Now I got an answer. Cool. OK, so, the, uh, so we have another way to simplify radicals. And I'm going to expect you to know how to do that. OK? OK, here comes the new stuff. It's a little bit difficult, but I know you can do it if you know the basics. Let's see, what are we going to cover first? Hello, operator, give me the number for 911. Oh, adding and subtracting radicals. Well, that's simple. We'll just do like terms. Let's see. Now what am I going to do? Look at these two. Are they like terms, 5 radical 3 and 2 radical 3? That's the question. Remember what answered that question before was the distributive property. Let's bring the distributive property out from the cave. OK, now if. We can find something that's the same and factor it out, and I'm left with only numbers. Hmm. Something that's the same, like this hmm. A. 
Yes. I see something that's the same, and if I take that out and I'm left with only numbers, they're like terms. Well, isn't that special? Well, then I can add them together. Just the numbers, five and two, and I get seven radical three. <laughs> Pretty simple, okay? In other words, the radicals have to be the exact same. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. Now, in this case, using the distributive property, I'm looking for that common letter hmm. or that common term that's the same hmm. that I can take out. Nothing for you. And I don't see it. So guess what? They're unlike terms, and you have to just leave them alone. And that's how she wrote. That's the answer. All righty then. Well, then, let's add these like terms. Let's see who's alike. I like to use circles and squares. <laughs> these two are the same. Now, that's 5 radical 3, and the second one is a minus what radical 3? When it don't have anything. I know that, dude. You got your buddy 1, right? OK, so 5 minus 1 is 4 radical 3. And then I've got a 3 radical 2 and a 4 radical 2 is 7 radical 2. And he don't have any friends, so we just bring him on down. Oh, no! And that's your answer. It's not hard, is it? As always, should you be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your action. Now, we can't add any of these together yet. We're required, before we try to add like terms, to simplify. So we really have three little problems here. Hmm. Let's look at this guy. We'll break him into the good and the evil. It's going to be nine Nothing for you. and two. Now, the square root of nine, I know what he is. He's three, and two's in the scum pile because I can't do anything with him. OK, so I'm good there. Hmm. Now let's work on the next one. Let's break, as we did before, the square root of 125. Come on now! Bring the two down into good and evil. I'm going to break 125, take out the biggest perfect square, and Nothing for you. what's left over. Now, square root of 25 is 5. And I get 10 there. Got to bring down your radical 5, and there you go. Hmm. Now, the last one, radical 2, sometimes it's real easy. Whoa! Nothing you can do with him. smells stinky! Sometimes they're all bad. Come on now! So just bring him down. Now, you've simplified everybody. Now, and only now, you look for like terms. I see two like terms, 3, radical 2, and 1, radical 2. That makes... 4 radical 2. And bring the other one down. He doesn't have any friends. Giddy up. And there's your answer. How about that? Please come again. Now, don't let the letters scare you. We can't add like terms together until we have simplified, and then we know whether they're like terms. Hmm. Let's take a look at the first one. I'm going to break him into good. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. Well, let's see. You can, might want to hum if you need to and evil. Now the 32 I'm going to break into 16 and 2 because I know 16. And the x to the third I'm going to break into x to the tooth and x. And I can bring down square root of 16 x squared and the scum. Hmm. The next one, take it one at a time, bring down the 4x. I'm going to break the 8x into good and evil. Now 8 has some good. Four, leaving you with nothing for you. Scum of two and X has no bet. Uh, uh, there's nothing good about X, so I just put him in the scum pile. Now, come on now. Bring him down. Square root of four is two, and now that two's a number, he'll multiply by the four X and get eight X. Okay. Hmm. Now this third term, in this case, there's no good in two or X. Whoa. Someone smells stinky. So I can just bring them down. Come on now. Now let's see. They all have the exact same radical. Woohoo! Come to Papa. So I've got 4x, 8x, and minus 1x. That's 11x, radical 2x. And there's your answer. It all goes to show you that it's always something. Now when we start mixing fractions together with radicals, 
Holy, go to war. Where do you see what happens? Consider this. This is a pickle, George. This is a pickle. Consider I had two scientists were doing a study on maybe... Nerd alert! Two scientists trying to find a dosage for, I don't know, something that would cure something. Math, maybe. Okay? And this guy found the correct dosage to be 1 over the square root of 3. Now this guy found the same correct dosage to be the square root of 3 over 3. Now they wanted to compare their answers. And it looks like both answers are simplified. I can't do anything to 1 over square root of 3. He's, you know, canceled and I can't do it. Don't be canceling those 3's because one's a radical and one's a number. So it looks like they're both simplified and I want to compare them. Uh -oh. How can we compare the values of these two? Well, I don't know. What we're going to have to do, consider that on the left side here, I can multiply. Can I multiply the top and bottom by radical 3? Watch what happens. Well, radical 3 over radical 3 is your buddy 1. That's going to equal, what that, that's going to hmm. equal 1 times square root of 3. And hmm. square root of 3 times square root of 3. Square root of 9, known downtown as 3. Hmm. Guess what? These two answers. Hmm. I know you are, but what am I? They were the same. These two scientists got the same answer. Fascinating. And they didn't even know it. So we've got a problem. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. We're gonna, we can't have people writing answers differently. Oakley doakley do. So we're going to have to decide, Ooh, yes. looking at these two answers, which way we're going to write it so that we can compare them. Hmm. We're going to only pick one way. We're going to call it a convention. One convention, one way to do things so that we, everybody can compare them. Everyone will know we're all doing it the same way. So henceforth, all radicals the great Oz has spoken. will be in numerators only. Okay, everyone's only going to write in numerators <laughs> for, parison, for purpose of comparison. Okay? So let it be written. So let it be done. We're not allowed to have radicals in a denominator, and that's the reason why never have one in the denominator. Pay attention, boys. I'll show you how it's done. So what are we going to do here to get that square root of 2 out of the denominator? Well, it's going to be basically the same thing every time. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. Why can I do that? Anything over itself is 1, right? Let's see what happens. In the top, I get 3 radical 2. Now, wait a minute. That's a radical, but... If I do it in the bottom, I get radical 4, and that becomes I you are, but what am I? a number. Now, I do have a radical in the top here, you look marvelous. but that's okay. I'm allowed to have a radical in the top. I'm just not allowed to have one in the bottom. It's okay. Fascinating. This is called rationalizing the denominator, or making the denominator not have a radical in it. It's going to probably make the numerator have a, a, a radical in it, but that's okay. How about little fire, Scarecrow? What are you going to do on this bad boy? Well, one might say, I'll use my old trick, multiply top and bottom by that radical. And that's, that will work. But let's hmm. see what happens. I get square root of 18 here. Hmm. And square root of 18 times square root of 18 is... 18. That's why it's the square root of 18. <laughs> okay? But... Wait a minute. I don't think we're in simplest terms. I'm going to have to break square root of 18 in the numerator into 9 and 2, the good and evil. So square root of 9 is 3. Go ahead. Make my day. Got to reduce. And I get radical 2 over 6. Well, wait a minute. I could have done that, radical 18 over radical 18 from the get-go. Uh, excuse me, Professor Brainiac. Let's consider one other way that might be a little bit easier. As long as you do the same thing to the top and bottom, pick any radical. We're going to use 2 in this case, so that when we multiply it, the bottom will be a perfect square. Note, we did the same thing to the top and bottom. 
do it in the top, we get a radical. In this case, we do it in the bottom and we get radical 36. You love radical 36 because it becomes <laughs> 6. And you don't have to reduce this time. So you don't have to do the same radical as in the, the original numerator every time. Just pick one, do it to the top and bottom in such a way that you'll make the denominator a perfect square. Hey, you're plumb right, Harmon. Got the idea? It is a lie. How about this one? One over the cube root of three. Well, if we multiply by the cube root of three over the cube root of three. What a maroon. <laughs> What an it's not going to work. <laughs> Here's where our basic idea of trying to make it into a perfect square or a perfect cube is really going to help us, okay? Cube root of 9 in the bottom is not going to simplify. Look, we get cube root of 3 over cube root of 9. It's not happening, Buf. So here's where the, the, the second idea is going to help you a lot. Well, Poindexter, what do we do now? Well, let's find a number, in this case 9, that when I multiply it by the bottom, I'm going to get a perfect cube. Hmm. On the top I get cube root of 9. On the bottom, you love 27, because you know what the cube root of 27 is. Yes! It's a perfect number, 3. No! And remember, that was our goal. I can have a radical on the top, I just can't have it in the bottom. So you multiply by whatever it takes to make that radical become a perfect root in the bottom. Now let's talk about conjugates. But you never predict would have predicted the next problem. Remember, from now on, all radicals have to be in the numerator only for convention purposes. You cannot have anything that is a radical in the denominator, okay? Hi, caramba! Well, let's look at this one. You might think, well, we'll use our same trick. Multiply the top and bottom by the troublemaker, radical 5 over radical 5. But if we do that, let's see what happens. I get 3 radical 5, and I distribute, I get, ooh, Radical 12 looks good. I know you are, but what am I? That's 5, right? Got to multiply here. Uh-oh. I'm getting a radical again. That's not going to work in this case. Why? Because there's addition, or actually there's subtraction. Anytime there's addition and subtraction, our old trick isn't going to work, multiplying top and bottom by the radical. So, well... Oh, it didn't work. Well, I got another trick for you. Consider the idea of FOIL. When I multiply this guy times this guy, okay, and then of course, done with him, and this guy times each of those, what happens? Hasta la vista. I get rid of those middle terms. You love that, okay? Well, I got a plus and a minus here. Hey, man, check it out, huh? You know what we call those? Conjugates. Now, I need to tell you a story about this specific problem. A couple years ago, these two factors, x plus 5 and x minus 5, were asked to leave their homes. That request came from their wives. And ever since then, they were asked to never return. And they've been called the conjugate couple. Note the conjugate couple are twins with opposite signs. We'll be seeing them in the future. Well, we've got a problem here, the same problem we couldn't solve. Let's bring in a conjugate of radical 5 minus 2 is radical 5 plus 2. I'm allowed to do it because I do the same thing on the top and bottom and it's 1. Okay, you just have to pick the right thing on the top and bottom. And it is conjugates, your buddies, twins with opposite signs. Let's see what happens. 3, let's do the top, 3 radical 5, that's okay in the top, 3 times 2, Okay, I'm allowed to have a radical on the top. No, no problemo. Where do you see what happens in the bottom? 
Let's do him. Radical 25 cleans up nicely. Oh, yes. Two Radical 5. Uh -oh. We got a problem here. But wait a minute. I'm done with him. Let's do the minus 2. Minus 2 Radical 5. Ah. Hasta la vista, baby. It's going to clean up. And minus 2. Don't forget to finish. And look what you get in the bottom. You love one. You would marry one. Genius. That's what it is. Sheer you have genius. rationalized the denominator using what we call a conjugate. Do that again. OK, let's do another one. The conjugate in this case of the bottom, square root of 3 plus 7, will be square root of 3 minus 7. I can do it as long as I do the top and bottom. Remember, they're conjugates. Twins with opposite signs. In the top, we get one times each of those. And in the bottom, no problemo. it's all right to have it in the top. In the bottom, we'll distribute. I get square root of 9, known downtown as Ooh, yes. nice number 3. And then square root of 3 times minus 7. Houston, we have a problem. Well, you see a radical, but guess what's going to happen? I'm done with him. I have to do the 7. What's going to happen here, 7 times radical 3, is they will be gone. And don't forget to finish. And you have yourself a fraction with no radical in the bottom. That was our goal, to rationalize the denominator. Three words, fab you love. And that's the trick, when there's addition and subtraction. OK, let's try one more. Here I come to save the day. See how this is the conjugate of 3 radical 2 plus 4? 3 radical 2 minus 4. Twins with opposite signs. Hopefully, he'll clean up. I'm promising you that it'll happen. Let's see. Can only multiply numbers and numbers and radicals and radicals. So I get 6 radical 2 and minus 8. Is it OK to have a radical in the top? Yes, sir. Now this guy. I'm going to get 9 radical 4, which is going to be 9 times Ooh, yes. 2, which is a nice number. I've got a bunch more work to do. I get 3 radical 2 mi times minus 4. Uh-oh. I'm done with that. Now the 4 times this guy is going to be, oh, and look what happens. I'm dangerous. I'm very, very dangerous. This conjugate stuff works, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Don't forget to finish. And what do you get? Is that your final answer? Well, you got to be looking always to simplify. And to simplify, sometimes... Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Don't even think of canceling things that are added. I don't care whether they're radicals or numbers, OK? Don't even think about it. But we can factor. Factor, <laughs> boy. You factor the top, now it's OK. Oakley doakley do. And you have yourself an answer. Oh, my goo. You got it again. So be looking for that, too, OK? Now, there are going to be problems that lead to radicals in equations. And there's some tricks that aren't that hard. Let's take a look and see what they are. Consider that we already know if you do the square root of some x squared, what happens? You cursed rat! Look what you've done! We've gotten rid of the radical, OK? We've gotten rid of the squared. Now, if we have a square root of x, and if we Square that, guess what? Look what you've done! I'm we still simplify it. So get the idea that the squaring of something and the radical of something are opposites or inverses. They undo each other. This is a nice trick to know. I'll get you, my pretty. So to solve equations that contain radicals, first thing we're going to do is get the radical by itself. 
Then raise each side to the power of the appropriate index, whether it's the square root b2 or the cube root of b3, et cetera, of the radical. And then just solve normally, because things will be cleaned up. I'm promising. I can do that, but I don't want to. And check the answer, especially in these ones. You want to check your answer. Show you why. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! OK, our first step here was to isolate the radical, which we've already done. So let's go right to step two. Now I use my secret weapon! And square both sides. Or raise it to the index of two. Watch what happens. On the left side, gets rid of the radical. And on the right side, well, you have to multiply. Now we solve normally. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Add a 3 to both sides to get the x by itself. Come on now! Let's see, 81 plus 3. And then I got to get rid of the 2. He's multiplying. So I'll divide both sides. And I think I have myself an answer. X is yeah, baby. Yeah. 42 now. And you're going to do it because I said so. Let's check 42. I think you're going to wish you did. Put him in there. 2 times 42 is what? 84 minus 3. 84 minus 3 is? 81, and we're hoping that this equals 9. The square root of 81 does. Surprise, surprise, does equal surprise. 9. Good thing we checked it. We're happy. We know we're right. Yo, well, let's look at one a little bit more difficult, perhaps. Warning, warning, oh. warning. By the way, when we're checking, we know that square roots had two answers. Boring. I know, but the square root of 81 is 9. Yeah, I know that, dude. The square root of 81 is also negative 9, OK? But we're not going to use plus and minus when we square root. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you the reason why till you get to calculus, OK? So you're just going to have to trust me. Only use the positive square root when you're checking. I'll show you in, little, in a little while why. Or not why, but how that gets is involved. Illogical. So only one square root, no plus or minus. Any of this thinking in, boy? OK, well, let's see. We have to isolate the radical in this one. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I've isolated that radical, and I have a minus 3x on the right. Now, how am I going to get rid of the radical? Now I use my secret weapon. That's right, square it. Well, if I do it on the left, I have to do it on the right, which gives me, on the left side, I undid it. The radical's gone. And on the right side, minus 3x squared is 9x squared, minus 3 times minus 3. OK, now I solve it normally. Now, this is a quadratic. Whoa! So I'm going to want to factor. I've got to get a 0 on one side and factor, remember? Let me add a 10x and add a 1 to get a 0. On the left side, they'll be gone, and I'll get 0. On the right side, I have a quadratic expression. Now remember how to solve these? Let's factor. And we take each of the factors, x plus 1 and 9x plus 1, and see what it takes to make things be 0. In one of them, now I want answers. I can get up. I'll have a minus 1. In the other one, the 9x plus 1, setting that equal to 0. Now I want answers. I Woohoo! Come to Papa. I get minus 1 ninth. I can do that, but I don't want to. Now, oh gosh, we've got to check them. Let's put in the minus 1. I'm going to get the square root of minus 10 times minus 1 is 10. Minus 1 is 9. Plus 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Now, radical 9 is 3 minus 3 does equal your buddy 0. You are correct, sir. So that one works. Now, let's put in negative 1 ninth. 10 times negative 1 ninth. Ooch. That's going to be a negative times 10 ninths. 10 ninths minus 1. I know you are, but what am I? 
one now known downtown as minus nine ninths, so ten ninths minus nine ninths is one ninth. Now the square root of one ninth plus negative three ninths, which is negative one third, what's the square root of one ninth? One third. And one third plus negative one third Ooh, yes. does equal zero. You're absolutely so correct. we got two answers this time. Good thing we checked. Sinister fosses are at work. Okay, now this one looks pretty easy, but there's going to be a problem I want you to note. Let's see, I got to get the radical by itself. Get, me, get rid of those. Uh, radical x plus 1 equals negative 2. Now, now I use my secret weapon. Get rid of the radical, we square both sides, and I get x plus 1, and negative 2 squared is 4. So it seems reasonable, subtracting 1 on each side, that x will be, or could be, 3. And you're going to do it because I said so. Think you may want to check this. Let's put in a 3. 3 plus 1, or radical 4. Does that equal 3? Radical 4 is 2. And 2 plus 5 equals 7, not 3. So this one didn't work. Now, I know you're going to say radical 4 also equals negative 2, and then it would work. But remember what I told you. When checking these, you only use the positive square root. Ooh, I'm dying. So this one, 3 is not an answer. And sometimes there is no answer. Quit crying. In this case, there is no answer. What happened? So basically, to solve equations that contain radicals, your steps, remember, are isolate that radical, get it by itself, now I use my secret weapon. raise each side to the power of the index of the radical, and then solve normally. Now, because I said make so. sure you check the answers, because often, or well not that often, but sometimes that answer isn't going to work. Do you mind telling me what this is all about, mister? This index of the radical. Let's look at something like that. Because when you say, why don't you just square both sides? A globetrotter always saves the good algebra for the final minutes. Well, let's see. We want to isolate the radical. Excuse me? The radical in this case is a cube root now. Make sure you note. Let's subtract 5 from both sides. And in this case, I get cube root of x plus 1 equals minus 2. Hmm. Well, now what am I going to do? I'm going to square both sides? Oh, no. Now I use my secret weapon. That's not going to help. Excuse me? This is a cube root. So I have to. You're way off. I say you're way off. This I have time, to raise son. it to the third power to undo it. The index of the radical. I have to do it to the other side too, bub. And what am I going to get? It's going to undo it on the left. It's going to clean it right up. You love that. It's going to be x plus one. Now what's negative two to the third? Negative eight. So all I have to do is solve, and I get. Let's see, x is negative 9. And you're going to do it because I oh, said so. Oh, I better check this one. Let's put in a negative 9. We got negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Now, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And negative 2 plus 5 does equal 3. It's in the hole. You got yourself an answer, OK? So you can see, I hope, what I was talking about when I said the steps are isolate the radical, not automatically square both sides, now I use my secret weapon. but rather raise each side to the power of the index of the radical. If it's a square root, you're going to square both sides. If it's a cube root, you're going to cube both sides. If it's a fourth root, you're going to raise each side to the fourth power. And that should clean everything up and you should be able to solve normally, whether it's a quadratic 
or a linear equation, you should be able to solve it. It may even turn into a fractional equation, but you should be able to solve it. Because I said so. And then certainly you want to check the answers because some of them just don't work. But now you know the rest of the story. Okay. From now on, when we mix radicals with fractions, radicals can only be in the numerators, okay, so that we can compare work. No fractions can be in the denominators. To that end, we're going to be able to rationalize the denominator. The trick was to multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. That is going to be 1. Whoever the troublemaker is in the bottom, okay? Whatever it takes to make the bottom a number or a perfect root. Hmm. In this case, in the top, we'll get 3 radical 2. Hmm. And in the bottom, we'll get radical 4, which is you are, but what am I? a nice number. You look marvelous. Okay. You're allowed to have it in the top, you just can't have it in the bottom. Fascinating. Now, yes, you're in deep do now. If we have a plus or a minus, we're going to use our old buddies on the top and bottom that are conjugates. Remember what conjugates were? Twins with opposite signs. And the promise was if I multiplied it, of course, the top would have a radical, but I'm allowed to Not have that. In the bottom, everything's going to work out real nice. Oh, yes. Houston, we have a Don't problem. Don't be afraid, because we know it's going to work out with a conjugate. Finishing it off, I get a Three nice... Words. Fab, you nice rationalized denominator. Okay, don't forget conjugates. What happened? Remember to solve equations that contain radicals. I'm going to isolate the radical. Now I use my secret weapon. Raise each side to the power of the index of the radical. Then solve normally. Because I said so. Make sure you check because you might have a bad answer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Let's get ready to rumble! In this one, I've isolated the radical. Now I use my secret weapon! I'm going to square both sides. The index of the radical. And clean things up. Then solve normally. Add three to both sides. Come on now! Get that x by itself, divide by 2, and you got yourself yeah, baby. an answer. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. And you're going to do it because I said so. Let's put it in and check it. 2 times 42, that's that 84 minus 3 is 81. And the square root of 81, son of a gun. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It works. OK? You're right. Correct. Good thing we check it. Okay, you know what it means when you hear that song? It's your turn. Your turn to what? It's your turn to do the homework. And don't just look at the homework. Don't just steady it. You pick up a pencil or a pen and you do it. Actually do the problems. Don't be afraid to make a mistake, okay? If you have trouble or you need help, you can always go to your old buddy, the homepage. Remember at www.montgomerycollege.edu upslash algebra2. Okay? So till next time, as usual, and I better see you here next time or I'm coming to your house. I want to thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much.